From the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's Broadcast and Digital Network and Troy campuses around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. We're glad you joined us for this look at what's happening in and around Troy University. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Well, Troy University and the Troy community are mourning the loss of Dr. Doug Hawkins, longtime member of Troy's Board of Trustees, who passed away last weekend. Hawkins passed away on Saturday due to complications following heart surgery. Hawkins practiced veterinary medicine in Troy for 55 years and served on the Troy University Board of Trustees for 35 years. He was appointed to the board at Troy University in 1980 and served as president pro tem from 95 until 2011. The tower at Veterans Memorial Stadium that houses the press box, the suites, and the athletic training facilities bears his name. Chancellor Jack Hawkins says Doug Hawkins is someone who will be irreplaceable. Uh, he was a great man. He was, uh, in many ways, a simple man, but a complex man. Uh, but he was the same with everybody. It didn't matter whether you were the governor or the peasant on the street corner. Uh, a man to him was a man, and that's the way he treated people. So he, uh, he was a, a living legend, an institution within an institution. Uh, we loved him uh, on a personal level. Uh, he was the very reason that Jack Hawkins and his small family came here in 1989. And he has been a great partner uh, throughout more than a quarter of, of a century that I've been involved in it. Uh, there's no way to replace him. In 2013, he wrote Turning Points, A History of Troy University. We'll play an interview Hawkins gave about the book in 2013 later in the show during our Trojan Talk segment. And Troy University's leadership and development program teaches Troy students how to become better leaders for once they graduate from college. Well, as Haley Greathouse shows us, this week the students in the program had the chance to hear from a successful product of the program that has a special connection to Troy University's Chancellor. Thirteen years ago, sitting in a leadership classroom much like this one, Kelly Hawkins Godwin was a student at Troy University. Now she is an assistant attorney general for the state of Alabama, focusing on child sex crimes, and was asked to return to Troy and speak to a new generation of leadership students. It's good to have Kelly come. And here's somebody that was here, not sure what she was going to do when she was at college, went out, found her true passion, found her true calling, gave him some good leadership principles today, in addition just talking about what she does. Godwin has spoken to the class for many years and says that the students give her hope and encouragement. It is really an honor for me to, to spend this time with future leaders and it's inspiring because it kind of reinvigorates me and, and my purpose too. Godwin had a long journey to the Attorney General's office, but her passion helped her succeed. And she was driven to go into law because uh, she wanted to protect the children of Alabama. Her, her focus is to prosecute the bad guys or those who abuse Alabama's children. Godwin spoke on her time at Troy, her journey through law school, and how she handles the everyday stress of her job. She emphasized that the students should focus on their passions to find their calling. Really what I tell them every single time I speak to this class is to, to really decide what it is they love. And a lot of times that gives them the direction as to what they're called to do. And Godwin says that humility is the most important quality a leader can possess. It's always important to, to view others as important and, and, you know, to try to make a difference in other people's lives, you have to be humble in order to do that. And I think that is the epitome of what a leader is and does, is they see other people as important and necessary in, in, in making their vision actually happen. Godwin's visit was a part of the leadership's class etiquette luncheon, which teaches the students proper dining etiquette. And Troy University School of Accounting held their Accountancy Day on Thursday. And a big part of the day is the chance for accounting majors to interact with potential employers visiting campus. Devro Bogart has the details. Troy University held the 24th Annual Accountancy Day Thursday, September 10th. There was a morning browse session where students were able to mix and mingle with representatives from accounting firms all across the southeast. 
Today is just really time for all the accounting students, me included, to walk around and meet the firms. You get really good connections, you're able to develop relationships, and hopefully those relationships turn into internships and eventually full-time jobs. One student hopes today gets her closer to her goal of acquiring an accounting internship. As it's my senior year, I'm looking forward to interning in the, in the coming months in the spring. So it's so nice to get to meet all of these firms. We're so grateful that they come down and take time out of their day to get to meet us and get to know us. Internships seem to be a main priority of the day as Dr. Grice hopes students will use this opportunity to network and promote themselves. Well, the older ones, the juniors and the seniors, they're, they're looking for internships and, and some full-time jobs. And so I hope that they uh, are able to walk around, uh, meet the individuals at the firms and uh, figure out which ones uh, might be a great fit for them. One student said today highlighted the differences of the firms which could make it easier for students to find the place for them. Uh, I think you just kind of learn personalities of the different firms and where you fit in individually with each firm because each firm has a, a very different culture and you just need to know where you fit in the long term. Deborah Bogart, Troy Trojan Vision News. Students on campuses across the state supported their football teams by wearing their favorite college colors last Friday. Haley Greathouse hit the Troy campus to talk to students about why it's important to show school spirit. College Colors Day is a statewide day to show support for your favorite college team. In Trojan territory, students don cardinal black and silver to show support for our Trojan athletics. It just shows our Trojan spirit and it shows our football team and other teams that we're supporting them and that we're backing them up and want them to get the win. I think it's important to wear your Troy colors so we support Troy University and show our football team because it's the last day they see us in class that we love them and support them. But students say College Colors Day is about more than just sports. So we go to Troy, we are Troy University students and um, we should be representing our school well. We should be wearing our colors to show our pride of the school. Appreciate why we're here, appreciate the place that we're investing our money into. Of course, how we support Troy is you know, wearing the colors and showing people that we love our school and that we care about where we go. Football season has kicked off, but it will be another week before Cardinal Silver and Black fill up Veterans Memorial Stadium. Fans say they are excited to see what head coach Neil Brown will bring to the field this year in conference play. A new coach means a new season, which means new victories. Excited about the new change and seeing what's going to, uh, excited about what's going to happen. I follow the Snapchat and I see some of their daily stuff and how they're practicing and getting ready for football season, so I'm, I'm super excited for a start. I think he's going to bring a lot of new stuff to our football team program and um, just hopefully rebuild it and get the wins. And College Colors Day is not the only opportunity students have to show their school pride. Definitely wearing your college colors on Fridays because it's normally game days to high school, so you're already used to wearing it. Being at the games, being present, being um, super supportive on Instagram and Facebook and all over media and just like showing that we have a super a lot of pride for the school. All this month, Troy University's libraries will put a focus on Latino American history through a series of events on three of Troy's Alabama campuses. The libraries will welcome a number of speakers throughout the month, but started things off with an art exhibit in Troy's Rosa Parks Library in Montgomery. Deidre Green gives us a look at the exhibit from the Trojan News Bureau in Montgomery. In honor of the Troy University Libraries receiving the Latino 500 Years of History grant, the Rosa Parks Museum will host the exhibit Dark Room, Memoir in Black and White. Um, we have a wonderful exhibit uh, based on Leela Quintero Weaver's book, Dark Room. And uh, the exhibit is in honor of National Hispanic American Month. Belle gave her thoughts on why it was so important for Weaver's story to be on display. Here at the Rosa Parks Museum, uh, we want to recognize everyone's experience in the struggle for civil rights. And so Ms. Weaver's book is about her personal experience as a child going through the movement uh, and the Montgomery bus boycott and other things uh, along with her family. Belle hopes that when people leave this exhibit, they realize that this story just isn't about the South's history, but it's also about America's history. This is America's story. It's not one person's story. It's, it's not Mrs. Park's story. It's not only one group of people's story. It's an American story, and everyone has a role in it and can relate to it. So I think that um, it's just giving you a different perspective 
and a way for you to learn about the civil rights movement and how we're still struggling with some issues today in the 21st civil rights movement. The Dark Room exhibit will be on display from September 1st to October 15th. In Montgomery, Deidre Green, Trojan Vision News. The next event in the series will be a screening of the film Latino Americans, 500 Years of History, War and Peace on Tuesday, September 15th at 4 p.m. in Patterson Hall, room 105. We'll take a short break, but when we return, we'll see how Troy University students are helping feed the hungry. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. The warrior spirit, it's in there, always has been. Now let it out and take the world by fire. Train well and learn what it means to be a Troy Trojan. Walk with confidence, conquer, claim territory and climb ladders. Know that you have the power to stand alone but the comfort of knowing that you'll never have to. Discover your inner warrior. Find it at troy.edu slash spirit. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. Campus Kitchens is an organization that works to fight hunger in the Troy community and is coming up on its one year anniversary. Alex Roberson went to Troy's dining hall to get the scoop. Campus Kitchens, a social club, has devoted its time into fighting against hunger in the Georgia community. The Campus Kitchen Project at Troy University is a student group here on campus that goes into the dining hall and captures excess food to reapportion into meals to deliver to different client agencies here in the area. The organization has become hope to many people in the community that lack in food supply. So right now we're targeting Head Start here in Troy and the Cauley Senior Complex and the Christian Love Center. And all of these groups have some families or some individuals that come in that are identified as food insecure, which means that they may or may not know where their next meal is coming from. Troy University's Campus Kitchens is coming up on its one year anniversary. The group has served Troy's community since 2014. We just launched in November of 2014, so just um, coming up on a year here. And we've already made, after today, it should be about 3,000 meals, if not a little bit more. If you are looking to get involved, the organization is always open for volunteers. We're always needing new volunteers, absolutely. Um, we couldn't pull this project off at all without volunteers. But anyone who's interested is welcome to drop by Eldridge Hall, room 122, and sign up or just ask questions. And you can also just show up at the kitchen, 2.30 on Thursdays and 1 o'clock on Fridays. We do meal prep every Thursday at 2.30, and we deliver it every Friday at 1 p.m. And uh, the delivery, we go to Head Start Christian Love Center. And uh, on Mondays, if we have meals left, we go to the College Senior Center. Alex Roberson, Troy Trojan Vision News. All this week, Troy University students are volunteering in the community as a part of the 9-11 Service Week activities, and Campus Kitchens was a part of that community effort. Alex Roberson shows us how the meals prepared in the last story went out to feed the hungry in the community. Each week, Troy University's Campus Kitchens takes meals out into the community to help feed the hungry, using food that would otherwise be wasted. Campus Kitchens is a uh, student program run out of Office of Civic Engagement that works with dining facilities here on campus to recapture unused excess food and uh, get that into the hands of folks that are in need. So each week uh, students meet, prepare meals for those that are in need and then we deliver them out um, the next day. This week, 90 meals were distributed between two different groups due to the efforts of Campus Kitchens. Yeah, so we're delivering uh, to two of our three client agencies. So we'll be taking 60 meals to the, uh, the children at Head Start and then 30 meals to the children at the Christian Love Center. LaWanda Bell, the youth coordinator at Christian Love Center, appreciates and is very proud to partner with Campus Kitchens. With the help of the project, the center is able to give more to the community. Our campus Kitchen has been amazing. It's an amazing organization. It's an amazing project. Um, campus Kitchen has just been throughout um, Pike County as a whole. I think that everybody has benefited from Campus Kitchen. The Christian Love Community Development Center, we always make a difference right here in Troy, Alabama. And with Campus Kitchen coming aboard to um, 
help us make that difference. We have helped so many families. So it's just been a really, really great um, project. Um, the Campus Kitchen partnering up with the Christian Love Community Development Center has really tremendously touched a lot of lives with um, Campus Kitchen being aboard um, with the Christian Love Center. If you're looking to get involved, Campus Kitchens is always open for more volunteers. So just stop by Elders Hall 122 and, uh, and sign up for a volunteer shift. You can also check us out on uh, Facebook at uh, the Campus Kitchen at Troy University or on Twitter, which is CK Troy. Alex Roberson, Troy Trojan Vision News. Troy University is home to students from all over the world, and trying to understand all of those cultures can be a daunting task for a Troy student. Luckily, there's a group that educates about culture through a common beverage. Grishma Ramal has that story. From the highlands of Scotland to the deserts of Saudi Arabia, tea is a beverage common to most nations. And campus group Tea for Troy celebrated this universality Thursday night. Tonight we have a presentation about Vietnamese culture, especially our tea, like lotus scented tea. So, um, it, has, uh, it had a lot of fun, people enjoyed it. Students from Vietnam presented various aspects of their country and its tea culture, in addition to performing some traditional music. Attendees described various reasons for why they enjoyed this experience. You can see that they're really proud about their country, and it's really uh, nice to see how enthusiastic they are about uh, giving a bit giving a bit to us. I'm a big tea enthusiast, so I love trying tea from wherever. The objective of Tea for Troy is to unite the diverse cultures present on campus, and students recognize this importance. A presentation like this will help students to know more about other countries' culture and about what's special about tea. I think it's important for the international students to learn about each other and about each other countries. And I hope there will be a presentation about Belgium soon also. The organization leadership hopes to add more variety to their programs this semester to events like karaoke night and Halloween parties. We want people to actually connect and build friendships here as well as learn about more, more cultures. Tifa Troy will meet again on September 17th featuring the African nation of Zimbabwe. Grishma Ramal, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Troy University students get a chance each week to blow off a little steam with the University Activity Council's Wednesday night activity. And as Samantha Charles shows us, this week the students got to have some fun in friendly combat in Sartain Hall. Troy University's Activities Council hosted Bongo Ball, similar to paintball. Today we are having bongo ball and um, all of my friends have been asking how do you explain bongo ball? Um, we are taking it to replace our laser tag so it's almost like a laser tag paintball nerf gun all into one. <laughs> Basically you have a team of four and you're given equipment to protect you because the balls kind of hurt. They come off um, from like air compacted guns and then you're also given a gun and your point is to hit the other opponent um, their area and that's basically how you score. At times, college can be stressful with papers due and exams to study for. And the University Activities Council knows just that, which is why they host events every Wednesday night. I feel with us going to school in Troy, Alabama, it's not much for us to do in Troy. And for the university to take time to sit something for us to do in the middle of the week, you know, because we have long weeks, especially with exams and stuff, it gives us a break from school and just lets us enjoy each other's company. Henderson had the chance to play bongo ball and said it was an exciting and adrenaline pumping experience. It was, it was actually really, it was fun. Your blood was pumping. With the mask, you really couldn't see, so you run around with a Nerf gun, which is really heavy. And it, it, blows, it, was like, it was like a video game. It was just really exciting. If you would like to participate in any UAC activities, all of the events are free. University Activities Council is um, a free council. That's like one of our main points that we try to stress to people so we can get more members to join us that it's free. Um, everything that we do except for movie night, which is a dollar, um, is free so that we can get more people to come out and just get people out of their dorms, way people able to meet each other and things like that. <laughs> We're going to take another quick break, but when we come back, we'll hear some offerings from our friends at Troy Public Radio. So, don't touch that dial. <laughs> Mom, 
Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. Each week we take some time to hear some of the work done by our broadcast partners at Troy Public Radio. As we do each week, we'll get another sample of Talk of Troy, the student-produced newscast of Troy Public Radio. Now let's take a listen. Of Troy University. I'm Thomas Gleaton. In its second year, the number of students for the Unmanned Aerial Systems Program at Troy has definitely increased. Producer Pierce Godwin reports that enrollment is up by 400%. When I spoke with adjunct professor Al Allenbeck, who teaches the class, he told me it's a good time to get into the field. There'll be over 100,000 new jobs by 2025, with about an $82 billion economic impact. In addition to finding ways for them to enter this growing job market, Alan Beck is training his students to aim a little higher. My vision is I want the student to be able to walk in and be the CDO, the chief drone officer. For more information on the unmanned aerial systems class at Troy University, you can go to troy.edu slash aviation. For the Talk of Troy, I'm Pierce Godwin. This month, Troy is presenting a Steinway Artist Concert Series across the state, featuring two faculty members from the John M. Long School of Music. According to Professor Hui Ting Yang, this past spring, in cooperation with the Steinway Piano Corporation, the School of Music replaced all of its pianos. And now we have 29 pianos in the John M. Long School of Music. Yang was named an official Steinway artist in February, an honor she shares with only 1,600 other musicians worldwide. Actually, becoming a style artist is a dream. First of all, you have to be invited to apply for this special title, and I was so honored. The concert series, which also features Michael Huff on trumpet, includes performances in Troy, Montgomery, Dothan, and Birmingham, and will conclude on September 11th in the Alabama Piano Gallery. More information can be found at music.troy.edu. I'm Thomas Gleaton, and you've been listening to The Talk of Troy a production of Troy Public Radio. Throughout the week, Troy Public Radio can be heard on 89.9 in Troy and Montgomery, 88.7 in Dothan, and 91.7 in Phoenix City. And it's time for our last break, but when we return, we'll have a special interview conducted with Dr. Doug Hawkins from back in 2013. Stay tuned, we'll have that interview right after this. This is Dr. Daniel Smith. He's an expert in domestic and international economics. But his proudest achievement is connecting with his students and helping them accomplish more than they ever thought possible. That's the warrior spirit, and it's alive and well at Troy University. Feel it at troy.edu slash spirit. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. As we mentioned earlier in the show, Troy University in the city of Troy lost a big supporter over the weekend when Dr. Doug Hawkins passed away. His love for Troy made it into print when a book he published about Troy was put out. 
this week in honor of the man who meant so much to so many in the community. We are replaying an interview I did with Hawkins about his book from October in 2013. Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Today we'll be learning about a new book about Troy University. And my guest today is Dr. Doug Hawkins, uh, known around here as a veterinarian, a board of trustee, and now an author. And your book, Turning Points, uh, tell us a little about the book and how this came about. Um, well, I named it Turning Points because uh, there's been so many turning points that have made the big difference. The first turning point was the railroad coming to Troy. The railroad had not come to Troy. Troy University would not be here today because that was the only way besides horse and buggy that you could get, you know, in the late 1800s, so the, the train coming. And ironically, the train coming made the university, made us have the, you know, get the university, and it got so loud because we finally had two trains running right there together, and the noise and everything caused them to have to move. And <laughs> the moving uh, originally was supposed to go to, to Orion Street, Trojan Terrace area, but Governor uh, Charles Henderson, he, he wanted us to go out where we are today, so mm -hmm. we're thankful for him for for what he's done to, to <laughs> putting you know, it right where it is now, so. he was he was really you know he's not called the education Bill Graves is called the educational governor but I'd have to put Charles Henderson right up next to him because he is he has really done a lot especially a lot for in this for, area yeah specifically yeah. now now the book itself uh, you how did you decide you wanted to write this book like why this book and why 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 write it well. You know, a lot of funny things can happen, especially uh, dealing with the a university and dealing with sports and dealing with fraternities and sororities and everything. So uh, every time I'd kind of tell one, somebody say, "You need to write that down." We, we need. To. So um, it got to the point after I retired, uh, I needed to write something down to, <laughs> to tell my time. But that that's really the reason. Plus, you know, a lot of times you like to express yourself. I know it's kind of selfish that you want to, but there's some things you want to express and you know, say them the way you are because it, it is your opinion, it's not somebody <laughs> else's. But anyway, each of the chapters is dedicated to a, um, each of the leaders that was leading and the people and everything that went there. But And it's gonna make it easy, I hope, in another 25 years or another 100 years, they, they can have a play or something and you know, you can have the people acting out these these chancellors or presidents and, and I think it'll, it'll be pretty good because I hope there's enough information, but they can get the character of them and, and what they produced and everything. And, and you personally have, have known four of the, of the presidents, correct? Since you've been, yeah, since you've been I was real unusual. Uh, Dr. Smith, uh, my mother, who's a Troy graduate, uh, talked with him, so I, I kind of knew him that way. Then when I moved to Troy, we lived on the same street and everything, and, and I knew him pretty good. Uh, Dr. Stewart, uh, he was here for a very short time, about two years, and I got to I had to talk with him quite a bit about the Greek system, and he was very much in favor. Then his untimely death, it came to, you know, mm -hmm. about having colonists in his time, and then later under, uh, Dr. Adams, we came into the, uh, to have, you know, actual Greek letter organizations that were recognized. And of course, up to Chancellor Hawkins to, to this day, that you, so the four that you've known personally and be able to tell a story. Now, now the book itself, you, you tell stories, but you've also got a lot of pictures in it, right? What's yeah, the importance of the pictures? Uh, there's probably a couple hundred pictures in it. And we, that was one thing we worked hard on because You'd find one, and you'd say, "Well, somebody sells so and so," and then you, you keep, you know, you keep getting. Let's take a look. Keep talking, but take a look at some of the pictures in here. So uh, that's quite a few, especially the aerial views. I was real proud of those because I don't think anybody's basically seen those. Yeah. Uh, a, but that's that's not a real good one. Yeah, that, that's maybe we got some, some good, other ones. There's some good color ones on over. Yeah, uh, but you know, a lot's really happened. Uh, I like that right there. Wow. Especially in the, you know, the last two chancellors have really, really, you know, put uh, Troy University, you know, on the map. Um, it's, uh, it was interesting because uh, you run across a lot of things and there's, you know, a few of the turning points mm -hmm. were not positive. You know, you always have positive, but, mm -hmm. you know, when you take a negative turning point and turn it into a positive, that's the name of the game, mm -hmm. you know, to take, you know, like taking or losing a football game, we're going to win the next, next one. one. I mean, you know, yeah, it's, it's the there. thing. But and now, tell me a little about where can we, where can we get a copy uh, of the book here? At, at the bookstore, uh, no, uh, Barnes & Noble. Okay. It's there. It's at Troy Antiques downtown. And on Brunny Street, it's at Jeans Flowers and Troy Animal Clinic. And, of course, there's my truck that's loaded down. So <laughs> so if they, if they see you around <laughs> see town and they want they, a copy, 
they can, yeah. they can get they can get one from you there. Yeah. So well, uh, it seems like a, a very the, interesting book and a good, colorful and informative way for people to learn about the university. And uh, I want to thank you for one for writing it and one for joining me today. Oh, I, I've uh, for enjoyed it. Enjoyed so, it very much. Well, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you, and thank you for joining us on today's edition of Trojan Talk. That's all the time we have. Now back to the news desk. And that's our show for this week. We hope you join us again next week for another edition of Troy Church and Vision Weekly. Have a good week.